Hope everybody out there is doing well, staying strong in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It is 3.05, March 18th, Friday the 22, 2022. All right. Um... You know, we were just going over a few things. We witnessed with a couple of people today. And the uh, thing is, what we run across a lot is people that say they're awake. They're wide awake seeing what's going on. And when we mention a few things to them, you know, when it comes to scriptures, they don't know anything. And uh, like I, I said, you, you know, how many got on the ark, right? And he goes, two. And I go, I said, man, you really got to get into the scriptures, man. You really got to. Um, yeah, it says, all who call on his name and believe and repent will be saved. Yes, but there's more in scriptures that you got to be reading. You have to be abiding in him, you know, and you have to believe. And it says you can't sit at the table of devils and the table of the Lord. You can't drink cups of devils and the cup of the Lord. Uh, the world, Satan is the prince of this world. Trying to get this across is... I think it's going to be a big thing that's going to hurt a lot of people when um, when it all comes down to it, you know? Because a lot of people don't understand the importance of it. Uh, it clearly says, you know, if he's not abiding in you, his word, the word. You know, he came down here three and a half years of teaching, man. And today, people having itchy ears no longer listen to doctrine, the gospel, you know, he came here to give us the truth, to bring us from darkness to light. How can you be in the light when you're still in the darkness? When you you don't even know that you've been indoctrinated. This is what I'm seeing, you guys. And I'm trying, you know, to stress the importance of it with people. Well, we can. You know, if they can even get that. And, uh... Anyhow... We try, give them the card, tell them to join in, you know, on the videos. I said, everybody on this channel is awake. I said, you could share with them. And I said, it's, we got to know the scriptures. You got to be getting into it. You can't, um, yeah, you know the times. And I said, the whole, I said, the judgment of God's beginning with the church. The Bible even tells you that the churches, you know, people sitting in the churches are going to seek teachers having itchy ears, no longer enduring sound doctrine, you know? And uh, it's not good, you know, with the things that are coming on people. It's just not good. And it's going to be what it's going to be. If they're supposed to make it, they'll make it. Nothing we do is in vain. And you guys, I'm probably going to always just keep speaking out to people until I see that time. Because I told you I've seen us all chest deep in the river. All going in the same direction. But we don't do the things we used to do ever since we were quickened in with Christ. Okay, we don't do the same the things we used to do since we were quickened in with Christ. And uh, until... I seen it when they start looking at us at, at really mad and angry. Then we moved to the left bank of the river completely. I mean, it was like we were getting out of the water, but we didn't get out of the water. We stayed in the water while we watched them being lifted out of the water. And as soon as their toes came out of the water, their heads dropped down like the life came out of them. Once they were pulled out of the water, okay... Christ is that living water. You know, we have to, that, those who are athirst, you know, come. That's what he says. Those that are athirst, come. And uh, as, as I seen their toes, it was very pacific. Once I seen their toes come out of the water, they dropped like puppets. Okay, puppets are made out of wood. And that's why it says, like dried branches, they are gathered up and they are cast into the fire. It was like an assembly line. The hooks were coming behind them and their arms would go up like this, like puppets, you know? 
both of their arms would go up like this once the hooks got came behind them and lifted their arms up like this. And then they were like looking around like, what's going on, what's going on? And then as soon as their toes came out of the water, they just dropped like a dead puppet. And then they were carried into a mountain. Okay, and this mountain had many levels, many doors, and they were going in there faster than you could count them. Okay, but only five people went to the left bank of that river. Then I seen it like as if we threw a rock at them, but the rock went bloop halfway. Like, in other words, when they come up against us, we have to be like Christ. This is why we have to be reading the word. Don't get upset. Don't get mad. Don't be vile. And just uh, be separate from them. Okay, there's, you know, the old time scriptures back then, they had no idea what it was going to be like now. Even the word where it says manifest, where they're manifesting and they're changing. They're becoming more, like it says, they're going to wax worse and worse. But none of the wicked will understand. But it says the wise will understand. This is what we're seeing, you guys. Okay, I got a few things here I want to read. And I'll load this up later. Um, but you guys, we share what we can share, okay? And, you know, like it says, nothing's in vain. You know, it could be for people, yeah, they may not know their scriptures. They're not, they're awake and everything. They're not, you know, they could be sitting in a church listening to people that, like, you know, man, I don't know. You know, and they're convincing them still that, oh, they've been saying it's the end times forever since Christ, you know. Uh, don't pay no mind to that. You know, we won't know until that day. Nobody will know. No, it says, don't let these days come upon you unaware. And it says, as sure as you see a storm coming, it says only the wicked will not receive a sign. Okay? Those that that are seeing, don't ignore what you're seeing. You know, like this guy I talked to today, he said, he goes, you know, speaking of dreams, man, I had one last night, man. He goes, it was demons. They were attacking me, man. He goes, it scared the heck out of me. I said, it's very real. I said, your eyes have been opened up and they know it. You know, where they used to take us captive all the time. And you're changing, you see the things, and you're being concerned about it. They know it. And they know those that are going to come out of this. And I said, stay focused, man, and, and follow Christ, man. Be reading the word. Get into it, man. Gave the card to the channel. I hope we see you here, you know. Um, this is what it is, you know. But until... We go to that left bank of that river. We keep sharing, you know, until they look, really look at us with hatred. You know, Jesus said they hated me, you know, because I tell them all their ways are evil and wicked. You know, he says, because I tell them their ways are evil. And what is it that we're doing now? We're saying the same thing. Not only are we saying the same thing, we're telling them that they were indoctrinated as children. You know, that you're not supposed to be saluting and uh, saying that this is your home and home sweet home. You know, read your scriptures, man. And you got to forget everything you were taught here. Read your scriptures. And there was a time and a place for everything. Yes, there was a time when the Lord would rebuke the evil in the governments and they would do his will. Okay, when when people were abiding in him when people were following him but now it's become to that point it's blossomed where people have fallen away and listening you know getting ear tickling stuff in their ears no longer listening to sound doctrine so he raised his hand off the government now they are what they are and uh everything is coming to pass right now man not and i don't have a spirit of fear in this not at all I we're prepared for this as we can be and not only that the more you get into it the Lord will show you he'll show you the time that's why I say date setters and all that I ain't paying attention to that all I got to do is look for the mayhem when the police can no longer control it because it's going to be mayhem um, that's going to be the time when they come against us the world 
when they come against us and we have to get away from them, like totally just go to our place, and they didn't do nothing to us. They just murmured against us. And we got away from them. You know, once they showed that they could, they hated us, we simply went to the left bank of the river. We stayed in the water. We watched them. And it says they're going to be gathered first. You know, and we're going to be, we're gonna, and it says in scriptures, you're going to see it. You'll see some fall to your right, and you'll see 10,000 fall to your right, the left. You know? So, this is what it's going to be. We're seeing it now. It's a manifestation, man. We're seeing the skulls and bones everywhere. We're seeing um, all kinds of things, man. It's extremely wicked, you know? And yeah, let me read some, you guys. Matthew 4.19 And he said unto them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. 8.22 But Jesus said unto them, Follow me, and let the dead bury their dead. Matthew 7.19 Every tree that bringeth forth, but bringeth not forth good fruit, it's hewn down and it's cast into the fire. You guys, we are that tree. You remember Nebuchadnezzar in his dream? He was that huge tree. He was the king, okay, where all the birds abided in him and his uh in the tree, all the cattle underneath of it, you know, and I mean, it looked beautiful and it touched the sky until he became um full of himself. And uh, that's kind of what this world has become. It's full of itself. And uh, the love, the pleasures, the things of this, you know, wanting more of it, coveting it. And uh, they, 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 they're godless. They don't even like to acknowledge God in their thoughts. And uh, this is why this is going to be destroyed. This is why, you know, it says every tree that does not bear good fruit is going to be hewn down and it's going to be cast into the fire. Listen to what it says right here. If a man, John fifteen sixteen, if a man abides not in me, he's cast forth as a branch, like a tree branch, okay, and is withered, dried up, okay, there's nothing in him, dried, is withered, and men gather them up and they cast them into the fire, and they are burned, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will and it shall be done unto you. Okay? 2 Timothy 2.22 Flee also youthful lust, but follow after righteousness, faith, charity, peace with them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart. You know where it says flee also youthful lust. That's the desires, wanting more, you know, greed, you know. Because <clears throat> they, what they do is it'll pull you, it'll pull you into the world. And if you get engulfed into this world, that's the spirit of the world. And if the spirit of the world is abiding in you, that's the evil, okay? That's the evil. We came here to know what good and evil is. And the world is uh, Satan's the prince of it. A lot of people don't even realize that. That's because they're not reading their scriptures. Okay. Power, wealth, things like that, okay? This is why it says flee from these things. Matthew thirteen forty three. Then shall the righteous shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father who has, who has ears to hear, let him hear. Mark 4 9. And he said unto them, Hear that, or he that has ears to hear, let him hear. Mark 7 16. If any man has ears to hear, let him hear. See, if any man has ears, the world will blind and choke that out where you won't have ears. Uh, if you're following after spiritual things and you're walking in the spirit, that's born again. But if you're uh, uh, of the world, you're you're in a lot of trouble, man. You're not born again. You can't be of this world. It says a friend of the world 
is the enemy of God. You know, people aren't talking about that anymore. We're not here for that, you know. Okay. Luke 8.8 8. And others fell on good ground and it sprang up. Okay, these are the seeds that fell off. Some fell on the rocks and it sprang up and as soon as the sun came out, it had no root in it. Okay, in other words, if the word's not abiding in you, you've got no root in you. And that's what I was running into today. The guy said he was wide awake, but yet he didn't know any really any scripture. You know, a lot of people, you guys, they've been raised listening, you know, having ear itchy ears. And they sought teachers, and they got teachers everywhere, man. The last 20 years or so, 30 years, they've been preaching it, you know, a different doctrine. And that's why they don't know what's in the Word of God, because they stopped teaching it, you know. Listening to some of those old, old, old pastors from the 1700s, way back then. Now, they didn't understand everything that we see today that are awake, but they were walking following the Lord, and they were living godly lives, okay, doing what the scripture told them to do, but yet the evil was still very clear and seen then. It's just, this is a different time. You know, his word is alive. The word's alive. It's the living word of God. It's the living word. You know, so even back then, but there's things happening today that they couldn't have known. Like the elements melting with a fervent heat. I've seen some of their, what they thought it was. They thought it was the atmosphere and stuff like that. That you know, H2O would combust. And they had no idea that we'd have planes in the air flying. They didn't have planes then when they were preaching. Okay. But for the most part, they were walking and following the Lord. Godly men. God-fearing men. You know, God fearing. So I like listening to some of it. You know, even though they don't didn't know all of it, you, you know, <laughs> the preachers today don't even know it. You know, where it talks about the elements melting with the fervent heat. We've all heard them saying how we've got an ozone problem. It's because of the carbon monoxide, blah, all kinds of nonsense like that. No, it's a sin problem. That's what's going on. You got to read the Word of God. When you're listening to man... You know, like I heard a couple of preachers on today's television thing, how they're talking about science-based. You know, they rely, they go by science in some of their things, and they're talking about things. They're not talking about the things we're talking about right now. But they use science in some of their findings, you know, to know whether or not we're in those times. You guys, there's nonsense out there, too. Be careful. Read the Word of God. It says you got the Holy, the Spirit of God. It says you've been given the Spirit of God. They have the Spirit of the world, which is of the devil. So you've got a Spirit, like the Word of God was Holy Spirit inspired. Okay? So now, if you're abiding in Him, the Gospel, if you're abiding in Christ, reading the Gospel, you're going to have an understanding you're gonna, it says you need not that any man teach you because you got the Holy Spirit working in you. They had the, this, the Word of God was Holy Spirit inspired. They were moved when they wrote what they wrote. They were moved by the Holy Spirit. These were men chosen by the Lord. Men that were chosen by him. And he's, and the scripture tells you that after Jesus left, the Holy Spirit was gonna come on them. And it did. We're seeing prophecies unfolding right now that um, most people can't see. The churches can't see it today. And we know why. Because of what the Word says. Things that they're not reading. Like the parable about the seeds that fell on the ground. That's what it is. And it says the world came in and choked it out. It also says, you know, where did these terrors come from? The devil, you know, came in. You know, after, when he, they fell asleep, the devils came in and planted tares. You guys, they're sitting next to people in the pews, in the churches, in the pulpits. They're everywhere. It's in everything. 
you know, people with reprobated minds. You know, they'll tell you what you want to hear if you're not careful. You know, how are you going to test the spirit that abides in them if the word of God's not in you? You're not. You're not going to be able to because you ain't going to have anything to test them by or with. You know, actually, you probably won't even think about it. But see, if the full word of God's not abiding in them, you know, the cares of this life, man. Here's where it says, And other seeds fell on good ground, and it sprang up and it bore fruit a hundredfold. Okay? Some 30, some 60, some 100. You know? But... Then there's the others where it was weeds around it. You know, it chokes the word. All right. And when he had said these things, he cried, He that has an ear to hear, let him hear. He's not talking to the deaf. He's not talking to the blind. Because the blind will lead the blind and they'll both fall into the ditch. You know, he's talking to those that the Holy Spirit is abiding. We, that's why it says in scriptures, you has he quickened, even when you were dead in sins, in Ephesians 2, 2, even when you were dead in sins, he quickened you in with Christ, his only begotten son. When he quickened us in, we were caught, washed with the blood. Our eyes became open. We started going, you know, something's not right. And some people were starting to question that person up there in that pulpit. And they were going, ah, just sit down. You know, you don't need to question what we're doing. You just need to sit down and listen. You know, well, that's the spirit that abides in us. We know something's wrong because it is. You know, and then some people aren't listening to it. You know, that's why it says if they're and they don't read the word. They could see something's not right, but they're not reading the word. And if the word's not abiding in them, okay, there, a lot of these people are probably going to be left behind because there's no oil in them. They're not, they're not, you know, the cares of this life, the love, the pleasures, the things still in it, or they're they're worried about their home payments. They're worried about paying their bills. You know, gas is going up. There's no food, and it's because they weren't listening. They weren't heeding. You know, they could have prepared and got ready. They could have gotten the word in them. And had an understanding. It says in scriptures, it says, with wisdom, get understanding. Okay. So I keep saying, it has an ear to hear, let him hear. Luke 14, uh, 34. Salt is good, but if the salt has lost its savior, wherewith shall it be seasoned? Luke 14, 35. It is neither fit for the land nor yet for the dunghill, but men cast it out. He that has an ear, let him hear. Revelations 2.11 He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the churches. He that overcometh shall not be hurt of the second death. 2.17 He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the churches. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the hidden manna, and I will give him a white stone, and in the stone a new name written, which no man knoweth, saving he that receives it. Revelation 3.13 He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the churches. The judgment of God begins with the church. Scripture says that the righteous scarcely be saved, you know, where is that going to leave all the other ungodly and sinners? You know, people say, well, we all sin. Yeah, we got to repent from it and we got to stop. Jesus said, stop sinning. And if you should still sin, okay, that's because you haven't yet overcome the world, okay? You haven't overcome it yet. And those that abide in him overcome the world because he overcame it, all right? But it says, if you should sin, he sits on the right hand of God. Repent. Repent. You know, and it says, those of us that have repented, we don't do the things that we're ashamed of. We stopped. We came out of the world. If we should ever, and this is, this is me saying this, okay? If we should ever want to go back out and sin again, we would be horrified with it. 
we'd be horrified because the Holy Spirit's already showed us and told us we know what's coming. And we know that it's evil in this world. We know it's evil that's abiding in, in people and they're not overcoming. They're not resisting. They're going with the flow. You know? So if we should sin, we would be willingly knowing that we turned back to the remnants of the world. You know? It, you know, it'd be a horrible thing. To know that you did. I don't I don't want anything to do with it, you know. We go out, we sit down in a restaurant or something, we order, guess what? Anybody that's waiting on us, yeah, they're gonna hear a lot. Person that sat us down at their table, they heard it, you know. But we can only share what we can share in the time that they'll stay and listen. But the waiter today heard a lot from us. We took a lot of their time and I hope it works out good for them, you know. They were awake. But they didn't know any scripture, you know. All right. Matthew fifteen fourteen, Let them alone. They be blind leaders of the blind. And if the blind lead the blind, they'll both fall into the ditch. Luke six thirty nine, And he spoke a parable unto them. Can the blind lead the blind? Shall they not both fall into the ditch? Okay, you guys, this is where it says here. It says, our love must be greater than the ties of family affection. Our love for Christ, for God. It's got to be greater. That's the first commandment. You know, and if you do that, then the second is likened to the first. We love our brothers and sisters. You know, we don't hate anybody here. That's why we try to warn people and tell them. And if they can't hear... Let them alone, you know, let them be, you know, that's just who they are. And you have to accept it. And this is why it says right here, our love must be greater than the ties of family affection. Then it, then it refers to Luke fourteen twenty six. If any man comes to me and he hates not his father and his mother, his wife, children and brethren and sisters. Yeah, even his own life also. He cannot be my disciple. Okay, then it goes the 27. And whoever does not bear his cross and come after me, he cannot be his my disciple. Okay. And then it says, uh, must be greater than our love or possessions and property. Okay, the things of this world. That's why you got to be careful of it. Okay. Um, so likewise... Whosoever he be of you that forsaketh not all that he has, he cannot be my disciple. You know, so if you're worried about these things and it's going to, what's going to hurt you is you don't have the word and you don't understand what's going on. And you're hoping that this is going to still continue as evil as it is, you know, as evil as it is. You guys, this is, it's at its peak. That's why it says it's ripe for the harvest. Because let me tell you something. You got perversion. They're adopting children. Do you, do you want to know where it's going from here? I don't. I don't want to see anymore. It's going to wax worse and worse. It's ripe. It's as the days of Sodom and Gomorrah. It's like the days of Noah. You know, you guys, I see things and I can feel it and I know things. I would rather not, but it's because of the spirit that I do know. And I don't, And I, like I said, I'd rather not know it. Okay. Now, the love that Paul had, okay? Listen, it says, uh, see uh, Phillips um, 3.8. Yeah, doubtless, and I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but as dung, that I may win Christ. Okay, 29 minutes, 30 minutes, you guys. The word, there's a lot. 
we read about this much of the word. So you see, it's very important, you guys. Yeah, he came here and he shed his blood on us abundantly. Okay? Even when we were dead in sins, he quickened us in with Christ. Okay? Now, what are people going to do once they got that? Are they going to turn back to the rudiments of the world? Now that you've been washed clean, are you going to go run down to that mud hole? Because you miss it? You want to be, you know, wallowing in the mud hole with the sows? I don't. You know, at most I'll try to tell them what's going on, the signs of the times. And if they can't receive it, then, you know, you kick the dirt off your feet and you move on, you know. Then there's going to be that time when they're going to look at us like, uh, because they're going to want to keep doing evil. They're going to want to go to that next level of evil that I we don't even want to think about. I mean, it's already horrible. I don't even like to think about the last laws that they passed. And it's got a lot to do with LGBTQ, you know, and and children. You know, it's horrible. You, people should be sickened by this. They should really be sickened by it. And uh, it's nothing to play around with, you guys. God bless each and every one of you. I hope and pray that you receive a message from this. And uh, we don't watch TV. We don't listen to radio. I listen to Bible scriptures. I listen to them over and over and over and over and over all day, all day. I, listen, I don't stop listening to it and reading it. Even going down, getting these messages that I do here on this. This is what we do. Okay, and it's important This you have to be born again. Those that are born again abide in him. You know, they're not sitting at the table of devils. You know, they're not silent. You know, we're still witnessing while we have daylight. That time's coming when they're going to be uh, ah, wanting us to get away from them, hating us. And they're, you know, and I seen we can clearly get away from them, but we still stayed in the water, but we watched them being gathered up, you know, and the scripture says that. Read Psalms 91, okay? God bless you guys. I love each and every one of you. In the name of our sweet Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ, blessed be the name of our Lord God forever and ever.